Money is the medium by which earthly success is measured. Money makes possible the enjoyment of the best the earth affords. Money is plentiful for those who understand the simple laws that govern its acquisition. Money is governed today by the same laws which controlled it when prosperous men thronged the streets of Babylon 6,000 years ago. I love that one. Money is governed today by the laws which controlled it when the prosperous men thronged the streets of Babylon 6,000 years ago. Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to Wealth Empire Show. This is a show for wealth creation, financial literacy, personal finance, everything that is geared towards your wealth creation journey. And today I'm excited. I'm excited because we're reviewing one of the, uh, I would say, most transforming books in my life, The Richest Man in Babylon. So the seven lessons or the seven cures of a lean pass by the richest man in Babylon, a book by Susie Orman. Number one, start thy pass to fattening. That's a very heavy statement. Start your pass to fattening. So that means you have to start putting aside part of your money and then fatten it by putting same amount or more every month every month every month every income every salary every overflow every inflow start your pass to fattening number two mm. control thy expenditures i'm going to use the english that is used in the book control thy expenditures budget the expenses that you may have coins to pay for thy necessities to pay for thy enjoyment and to gratify thy worthwhile desires without spending more than nine tenths of their savings thy the word is thy so at least Actually, the, the richest man in Babylon gives you a very small percentage of what you should put aside to fatten your purse. A tenth, just a tenth of your money. The truth is, what each of us call necessary expenses will always grow to equal our incomes unless we protest to the contrary confuse not the necessary expenses with thy desires all right so what the, the the book is trying to say is if you don't control your expenses they will always look like necessities yet they are desires so what you do control them number three make thy gold multiply I love that one. Let me explain. A man's wealth is not in the coins he carries in his purse. It is in the income he buildeth. The golden stream that continually floweth into this purse and keepeth it always bulging, that is what every man desireth. An income that continueth to come. Whether you work, or you travel if you earn your money only when you work then you're still a slave to your job this number three explains that for you to be able to retire or to not have to work for money then you need to invest your money so that it can multiply so that's number three make the gold multiply now to put each coin to laboring that it may produce its kind 
its kind, even as the flocks of the field, and help bring to thee income a stream of wealth that shall flow constantly into thy purse. Wow, that's beautiful. To put each coin to laboring that it may produce its kind, even as the flocks of the field, and help bring to thee income, a stream of wealth that shall flow constantly into thy purse. And number four, guard thy treasures from loss. Hey, study carefully before you part with thy treasure. Be not misled by thine own romantic desires to make wealth rapidly. It's a lie. Every time you hear quick wealth being announced, it's not true. Ignore. Be not misled by thine own romantic desires to make wealth rapidly. In fact, the book calls it romantic desires. When you're pushed by pressures of wanting to grow wealth very quickly. Before you trust it as an investment in any field, acquaint thyself with the dangers which may beset it. What? When you get a hold of this book, I, I trust you, you're going to read it a thousand times. The English is the King James Version kind of English, but it brings the point home. Let me read that again. Before you trust, before you entrust it as an investment in any field, acquaint thyself with the dangers which may beset it. Guard thy treasure from loss by investing only where the principle is safe, where it may be reclaimed if desirable, and where thou will not fall to collect a fair rental. Consult with wise men, secure the advice of those experienced in the profitable handling of gold. Let their wisdom protect thy treasure from unsafe investments. Simply put, before you invest your money or your gold, Consult people who have mastered that business. Acquaint yourself with how the business is done. I believe this is something that we have had before. But the way it's explained here, you have to really, really acquaint yourself with the business that you want to do. We are on number five. Make thy dwelling a profitable investment. This is in regards to where you live. The book cautions us of not renting forever and ever. Amen. Think about how you can transform the place you live into a profitable investment. Where even if you buy it and you're not the one who will be living in it, you rent it out. So listen to this. When the house be built, thou can't pay the money lender with the same regular regularity as thou didst pay the landlord because each payment will reduce their indebtedness to the money lender a few years will satisfy his loan so there's more or less talking about mortgage but not the mortgage uh not any other mortgage not any other you know lender it has to be whereby your rent is equivalent to the payment of that house for us you know a reasonable uh period of time i've heard of homes where between five and ten years you can be done paying and the rent the, the interest is not very high but not the usual mortgages where you pay from the age of 35 until you're 60 and 65 and then when you're done paying you can't even walk up the stairs of that house do research and find out is it possible to buy that house that you're living in by using the same rent that you pay per month or slightly high that's on you that's on you you're the one to do that research thus come many blessings to the man who owneth his own house and greatly will it reduce his cost of living making available more of his earnings for pleasures and the gratification of his desires to summarize that point own thy home number six Ensure 
your income. Ensure your future income. This is in regards to insurance and protecting your property. So, therefore, I do recommend to all men that they, buy, that they be wise and well thought out methods to provide and to protect your past from losses. Listen to this quote. Provide in advance for the needs of thy growing age and the protection of thy family. There is nothing that can bring down an empire. And some of these points were just belaboring because they will keep interlocking from previous episodes because all these people who have been wealthy, when approached to talk about how they got there, the points are usually more or less the same, just in different point of views. So once you start building your empire, ensure your empire from damage Damage can be theft, destruction through acts of God. It can also be, you know, by, by fire, destruction by fire. So insurance is very, very important for your property, for your life, and even for your business, the business that brings you the money. And number seven, which I believe is the last one. Increase thy ability to earn. Don't just stick with one income. The more of wisdom we know, the more we may earn. That, that man who seeks to learn more of his craft shall be richly rewarded. Always do the affairs of man. Change and improve because keen-minded men seek greater skills. And thy may be better. Serve those upon whose patronage they depend. Therefore, I urge all men to be in the forefront rank of progress and not stand still, lest they be left behind. So to cultivate a, a, a spirit of growth, number one, improve yourself. Learn. Go back to school if you have to. Sharpen your skills. So that you don't become outdated. Number two, don't stick with one income. Look for more ways to make money. And we're going to have an episode in the future of the various businesses that we can venture into. Let me read this statement for, uh, for, for, for clarity. So cultivate thy own powers to study. Become wiser. Become more skillful. Acquire more respect. Acquire more confidence. Be careful that you don't become outdated in your craft. Whoa. So in summary, <laughs> I know that was a lot of English. Number one, start thy past to fatten it. And number two, control thy expenditures. Number three, make thy gold multiply. Number four, guard thy treasures from loss. Number five, make thy dwelling a profitable investment. Number six, ensure a future income. And number seven, increase thy ability to earn. Wow. Every time I read this, it sounds like the first time I'm reading it. Now, let me give you the five laws of gold according to the same book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Now, number one, the five laws of gold according to the richest man in babylon by susie orman george s Clason. <laughs> actually the richest man in babylon is by george s Clason, with a new introduction by susie orman i think it was rewritten now the five laws of gold number one gold cometh gladly and increasingly To any man who will put by not less than one tenth of his earnings to create an estate for his future and that of his family. I know the book says 10%, but 10% could be very little if you're older. But for young people who are beginning, 10% is sufficient. The law of multiplication and compounding put in place is going to get you somewhere in 10, 20 years. Number two, gold laboreth diligently and continually. 
contentedly for the wise owner who finds for it a profitable employment multiplying even as the flocks of the field money loves to be multiplied gold loves to be multiplied by gold i mean money number three gold clingeth to the protection of the cautious owner who invests it under the advice of men wise in its handling whoa repeating that gold clingeth to the protection of the cautious owner who invests it under the advice of men wise in its handling number four gold slippeth away from the man who invests it in business purposes with which he is not familiar or which are not approved by those skilled in its keep number five gold flees from the men who would force it to impossible earnings or who followeth the alluring advice of tricksters and schemers or who trusts it to his own inexperience and romantic desires in investments i'm going to read that again gold flees from the men who would force it to impossible earnings or who follow it the alluring advice of tricksters and schemers who trust it to his own inexperience and romantic desires in investment and with that ladies and gentlemen that's a wealth of information if you do this listen and release and grasp, grasp something i believe you're headed the right direction so thank you for watching and listening until the end i do believe with all of my heart that practicing these five laws of gold the seven rules of money by uh, from the book of the richest man in babylon or if you want you can call it the seven cures of a lean pass by the richest man in babylon george s classen i believe your financial life will change do join me for the next episode where i will give an overview of budgeting and also how to get ready for 2023 being one of your most successful years yet god bless you Bye. See you on the next episode.